Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into the Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. This is Brie Noble, and I am excited to be with you on the podcast today. And I have my guest and my friend, Glory St. Germain from Ultimate Music Theory. We are going to talk about music teachers, teaching online, teaching offline, how we can make money doing that today. But before we jump into that, Glory, I would love to have you share your background with our listeners and watchers today. How did you get involved in music and how did you develop over the years to eventually starting the company that you have today? Yes, absolutely. Bree, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so honored to be here on your podcast uh, and hello to all of your listeners. Uh, so I'm Glory St. Germain. Um, I grew up in a musical family and funny story, Bree, my mom always said um, it was before the dishwashers, right? And so she would say, Glory, you can go play the piano or you can do the dishes. And so never in my life did I do the dishes. I always played the piano. And uh, at the age of six, I started teaching. And as my friends were making, you know, a couple of bucks babysitting, I was making five times more money being a teacher. And so at the age of 16, I became an entrepreneur and never looked back. (laughs) It was just about making the money and growing the business. And then, you know, we, 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 come up with these obstacles that were faced. And for me, one of them was music theory. I didn't like music theory. I didn't understand music theory. But as musicians know, everyone has to learn music theory, whether you do a book or just learn two notes that are, you know, an interval apart. Um, So I started studying about how could I become an effective educator and landed up creating the Ultimate Music Theory program. That's very cool. I love that you were an entrepreneur when you were like in your teens. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And I think that, you know, once you, you kind of experience that little taste of success, like you did, and you're like, wow, I'm making a lot more money doing this than babysitting or whatever I could, you know, mowing lawns or whatever (laughs) I could do like that just sparks you like, oh, wow. Well, how much further can I go with this? Absolutely. And, you know, it's so interesting that you said that because as I realized that I was making a lot more money doing that, it really put me on my path to explore other things. So I was an educator and from being an educator, I became an author. I wrote over 60 books in music theory education. Okay, wait, let me stop you there. 60 books. That just makes my head crazy. After writing one book, I can't even imagine. (laughs) Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that, Brie, because here's the funny thing. I I wrote my first three books and I went and looked for a publisher and everyone said, oh, go away, little girl, you know, come, come see me when you've sold some books. So I said, oh, okay, fine. Don't believe me. Just watch in the words of Bruno Mars. uh, He's, Mm -hmm. you know, one of my go-to guys, the uptown funk. And I said, don't believe me. Just watch. I became my own publisher. We've sold over a million dollars of books. So I must be doing something right. Uh, You know, you don't hit the million dollar mark unless you, you are really helping people. And I realized that as I traveled across North America, presenting workshops, that teachers looked at me and said, okay, we love your books, but we also need help in how to teach music theory. And that's what led me to create the Ultimate Music Theory Certification Course for Teachers. And we are now in 38 countries around the world, and music educators are saying, well, thank goodness, there's finally somewhere to learn how to teach music theory and implement that into any discipline, whether you teach voice or whatever instruments you're teaching. So I'm really um, a proud mama coach of all of these musical entrepreneurs that are now making a a lot of money in their business as well. That is awesome. So you teach them to to teach music theory, but you also teach them to run a successful business. How did how did that kind of develop from from just music theory to what it is today? 
Absolutely. Well, the world is changing and certainly in 2020, it took a drastic turn for you are either going to be teaching online, learn how to do that, whether you go back to in-person or not, or you're going to be out of business. And I realized that I could not only help teachers teach music theory, but I could help them grow to become a six-figure business. If I can be a six-figure business as a music educator, I can teach others how to do it as well. So it's also about diversifying. How can you make more money and teach less. And that's by teaching music theory club classes. Now I've done a lot of research in writing my books, obviously. And one of the things that I have discovered is that you actually learn faster when you learn in small groups. So this is called the cooperative learning theory. And it really helps you with uh, connecting with others. And as musicians, it's not an isolated job, right? We want to play, we want to jam, we want to hang out with our musician friends. So in teaching music theory club classes, you're going to make five times more money per hour than what you're making now as a teacher, which is very appealing to me, first of Mm -hmm. all. And it also the camaraderie, you know, as I was teaching um, music theory, and here's, here's a great tip for your listeners. And that is this, if you are, a music teacher and say you're teaching piano, you can branch out and teach music theory group classes to all disciplines. For example, I went across to the high school behind me uh, here. It's a local high school. And I talked to the band teacher and I said, I'm, you know, Glory St. Germain and I'm teaching music theory club classes. If you have any students and he went, thank goodness for you. And boom, I had all these students coming that were uh, string students, horn students. They, none of them were piano lesson students. So I taught them theory and the band went on to win triple gold in their competitions because now they had the skill set to read music faster. And, you know, they were really proud of themselves. They could uh, start to play other instruments too, because they could read, right? So it's taking the musician to the next level. And nowadays, you know, Brie, a lot of people I see behind you, you got a guitar, you got keys, like people want to explore different instruments, but if you have the skill set to understand music theory, you're going to get there so much faster. Yeah, no, I'm sure band teachers would be so thankful for something like that. Are you going into, you know, how to read the full band score or the orchestral score? Because that is very different from like the piano score. And, you know, every instrument is looks different on the staff and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great question. Because when you are doing those disciplines, I think one of the things if you're starting the beginner ABC workbooks, the keyboard is a visual aid in really helping students understand distance. So many of our elite educators, as I mentioned, play um, are, and are teaching everything from strings to um, saxophone. Um, Tulane is actually in Zimbabwe. He's a saxophone educator. Um, uh, Mark teaches strings. When we look at them, when we talk about those conversations, he said, what's great about the Ultimate Music Theory program is that you are using the keyboard as a visual representation, but it's not a piano book. It is a music theory book. And we're also introducing the uh, alt- alto clef, the you know tenor clef, obviously treble and bass clef. They're also learning about key numbers. So it it is the foundation, I think, that musicians need. And we've also created the Ultimate Music Theory app that correlates to the workbooks. So for example, if you're doing the basic rudiments workbook and you're in lesson five, you can use the music theory app, deck five, which is identical to the lesson you've learned. So it's just another reinforcement tool and kids love to play on their phones, right? Or on their mm-hmm. computers. So just another way of, um, you know, connecting the brain to the music and uh, making you smarter. And I have a little tip though, and Bree knows this, but music, learning music makes you smarter. We know that, right? But teaching music makes you better looking. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was thinking what you said about the phone, right? Kids like to play on your phone. And and that reminds me of what you said about, you know, you can either play piano or do the dishes. Yes. (laughs) Say to your kid, like, well, you can only play on your phone if you're playing on your music theory app. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. Yes. And the great thing, we've partnered with Brainscape. And so as students are going through the Ultimate Music Theory app, they're actually competing. Like they go up the leaderboard to see how many, um, you know, decks they've gone through and what their scores have been. So it's really, really effective, a powerful tool for learning. Oh, yeah. Gamification. That's going to look them for sure. Well, that brings up a question that I had about 
you know, cause we all went through the pandemic and we did a lot of teaching online and, you know, I've had my entire teaching business be online because I'm teaching courses and, and uh, workshops and things like that. Um, but you know, is it, is it really more effective to teach in person or online, or is it just kind of using a different modality, but it can be just as effective for either? Yeah, I think you're right, Bree. I think it's a hundred percent effective either way. You know, I had the opportunity to um, interview um, Sal uh, Spilini. Uh, he is the vocal coach for Cody Lee, who's um, on America's Got Talent. He's in the finals for AGT right now. And he shared with me that even this high level of coaching, he's just doing it on Zoom because you can't always be in person. Mm -hmm. And I have many uh, people who have gone through our Ultimate Music Theory Certification uh, course, the Elite Educator Program. And Liana, for example, is teaching in three different countries. She teaches in Germany, she teaches in Singapore, and she teaches in the US, but not even in her own state. And she lives a freedom lifestyle. She travels, she goes to Hawaii, she goes to California, she flips open her laptop, teaches music theory classes, and off to the beach she goes. So Mm. I think it has given us a massive opportunity to also be reaching out to homeschool communities, to opportunities to be teaching during the day. If you've still got young kids at home, you don't maybe don't want to be teaching through the supper hour. So this is going to open up a whole box of crayons for you to explore different ways of teaching and explore teaching in different countries as well. I love that too, because we all go through seasons in our life, right? I did the homeschooling thing for a while with my kids. I worked from home, you know, only during school hours. Like, you know, it it changes all the time depending on what your family situation is. And so having that flexibility, you know, maybe during this season we go online, but then maybe later, like I really miss that personal contact. You can open it up to to in-person classes. Yes, so many teachers now. And in fact, uh, one of our elite educators, uh, Joanne Barker, teaches uh, hybrid. So she has many students that come in person uh, into her class because she is teaching theory club classes. And then sometimes there's a few that maybe are sick or not feeling well or parents can't get to class. So rather than missing, they come in through Zoom. So now she's teaching hybrid classes, which are just as effective. They still are all learning. And even as you and I are hanging out, you know, we might not have met in person yet, but, you know, we chat, we become friends. So I think there's a really wonderful community with uh, opening up classes and having the opportunity to connect musically in person or online either way. I think it's very true. I, you know, I've had some people that I've worked with since 2015 and we had never met in person. And then eventually we'll meet somewhere like at a taxi conference. And it's like, it's not like, oh my gosh. Right. You know, it's just like, Hey, like we're just (laughs) meeting off of a screen in person, but it's the same person and it's the same experience kind of, it's not like, oh my gosh, like a big deal that we met in person. Like I thought it would be because I feel like I really know them. A hundred percent, Brie. And, you know, when I look at my team, so I have 14 people on the Ultimate Music Theory team and we're in five different countries. And so we have people that are working with us uh, in Pakistan, in the UK, in New Zealand, in the US and in Canada. So my team is in five different countries. Many of them I have never met and I might never meet them in person, Mm -hmm. although we are planning to have an actual Ultimate Music Theory team meeting in Las Vegas within the next year. So we'll see which will be great. But we know each other really well because we've been working together for years, even though we haven't met in person. So you do, you get to know somebody pretty well and you get your little inside jokes, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yep, for sure. Well, and I, I, so I think about, you know, a lot of people that I work with, um, maybe they're an artist and a teacher, you know, they're doing both. They're um, maybe teaching on the side, they're teaching teaching a few voice lessons out of their home or whatever. And they're thinking to themselves, like, how could I possibly make a six figure business teaching music? Can you give them kind of a little like lay of the land or a bit of a blueprint of how they could actually make that happen? 
Absolutely. Um, I tell you for a fact, because I've been doing it for years and years and years. And the key to being a six figure entrepreneur as a music educator is having, you know, multiple streams of income. Uh, first of all, I want to invite them to attend one of our live events, musicbusinessmastery.live. It's a three day live event where I will be giving you the, um, the mindset, the strategies and the tools as to how you can grow a six figure business. But ultimately, what it is, is you want to be teaching, you want to be teaching in groups, ultimate music theory groups, I go through all the steps that that you need to get your marketing out there. How do you find the students that are going to come into your groups? And when you're teaching group lessons, you're making more money per hour, but you can also be teaching students privately as well, because some people want to have a little bit of both. They want to do practical privately, they want to do groups privately, but you can, and the other thing I think is important is to leave space for your professional development. So all of the listeners and viewers that are connecting with you, Brie, are here to up-level their skill set as an educator. And I want to commend them because professional development is the key. I work as a coach, as a music teacher's business coach, and I have coaches, um, more than one, in different areas of my business to grow as well. So I think it's really important. If you want to take that step, if you want to grow your business into a six-figure music teaching business, it's totally doable, but you've got to, um, you know, connect with a coach or connect with someone who's been there, done that so that you don't have to take, you know, 20 years figuring it out the way that I did. I just share everything and say, here you go, business in a box. And, uh, you know, certainly our um, music educators can attest to their success. And I'm really proud of our, our grads as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I could never have done any of the stuff that I've done in my business if I didn't have my own coaches in the background, right? Like there's all, we always have our blind spots, we have our places we need to grow and and so I think it's it is really important to to have that. What is the difference actually between a teacher and a coach in your opinion? Well, I think uh, you know, it's a fine line. Teachers teach and And some educators, you know, they're very qualified and they teach. But I think a coach in my mind is taking them to the next level. A coach is really, I think, a little more of a, I'm listening to learn and not just listening to reply. And Mm -hmm. even I mentioned earlier about Sal being a coach for Cody Lee. And I, and I, in my interview with him, I was asking him, how does that work for you? Cody is blind. He is autistic. He's a savant. And Sal shared with me, he said, you know, I sometimes just get a sense for he's feeling sad. So perhaps we're not going to play sad music today. And I think a coach is really there to guide you. Where do you want to go? And it's really important to also study how to be a coach. You can't just put that name on yourself and, Mm. and hang out a shingle and say, you know what, I'm a coach. Um, I have done a lot of work, uh, you know, attended a lot of events with Tony Robbins, with my coach, Sage Levine from Women Rocking Business. I got to give a shout out to my coach, Sage. And it is about learning how to be a coach. It's another step. And that's something that we also deliver inside musicbusinessmastery.live to our ultimate music teachers is how do you become a coach? Because you need to be taking on the ownership and the responsibility. If your students are quitting, you need to look at yourself, not that they've got soccer practice, not that their parents say, oh, we can't afford that. Not all the excuses that come with it, but I am take it very personally. If someone, one of my students, if they're quitting, I need to know why, what is it that I didn't fulfill as a music teacher, as a music coach, there's something missing. And we teach a lot of NLP in our program. So NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And Neuro is how we think. Linguistic is how we communicate. And programming is how we get the results that we get. And you really need to understand visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. And you need to teach in all three modalities to really be a powerhouse educator. So that no matter what your learning style is uh, or your teaching style is, that your students are going to be massively successful. Mm. Well, that plays into, you know, I know that there are a lot of mistakes that teachers make at first when they're trying to build their business. And so one of the things you just said was like not playing to all the different modalities. Are there any other mistakes that you want to mention that could help people maybe not fall into those traps? 
Yeah, I think there's actually four mistakes that are often very common. And one of them is to have a vision of clarity. What clearly is your vision for your business? And so often we just kind of start teaching, but we don't actually set a business plan or really have a vision for what we want. So sometimes that's a mistake. And that's why people spend a few years, sometimes many, many years just scrambling. Do I want to teach little kids? Do I want to teach homeschool? Do I want to teach in the high school? Do I like, what do I want to do and take the time? So have a vision of clarity. Um, Another mistake is having a plan to execute. And this is really key, even as educators. So often we do, we may be put a lesson plan together for teaching, but we need to have a plan to execute our business. So write down what is your, and you know, one thing that I often say is what is your cash producing activity today? Mm. What did you do today to generate cash flow into your business? Or are you just posting on social media for the heck of it? Um, a third system that that often is missed is a system that works for you. Um, you and I talked about having coaches. And I can tell you, I remember having one session with my coach. I paid $500 for a 30-minute coaching session and in my business, high-level business. And it saved me $30,000. Mm. And I said to her, Megan... Like, thank you. You just saved me 30 grand. And she said, I know, (laughs) you know, so having a system that works, you need that. And I guess that brings me to the fourth thing. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that um, teachers and educators often have is not having a coach for confidence. I wouldn't have hit the, the stage twice doing my two TEDx talks if I didn't have a TEDx coach. Like that just, you know, and he was there with me, guiding me all the way. Right now I'm writing a book. Um, the Ultimate Music Teacher's Guide, and I have a book coach. So I highly recommend that these are something you consider when you're looking at saying, okay, you know what? I'm serious. I really want to make money, but I also want to serve at the highest level as a music educator. So what are the steps? What do I need to get started with? And there you go. Four mistakes. Don't make those. (laughs) Well, and I love that because for me, the first time that I met you um, in the mastermind that we're in, I was like, this woman has confidence. Like, you know, she may not have always had this kind of confidence, but she's got it in spades. <laughs> yeah. And so d- did you, did you actually do a lot of coaching in that? Well, you know, it's interesting. The answer is yes. I remember sitting on my hands. I'm kind of sitting on them now. And actually, if you watch them, my TEDx talk, I had to go through reliving this horrific moment. And in the TED talk, you'll see me going through this pain point. And as I recalled going into music, teachers events, right? We've as music educators, we've all attended conferences from time to time. And I said to my friend sitting beside me, oh, please don't let them ask me a question. I don't know why they always pick me and I'm just going (laughs) to, I'm not even going to put my hand up. And so sure enough, um, they said, now, how many of you do recitals, music recitals? And of course, everybody put their hand up and the, the, uh, you know, presenter knew me and said, Glory, why don't you come up here and share with the rest of the teachers how you do your recitals and what's the process and give me, and I'm terrified. And I'm like, what? Uh, so I went up to the front and, you know, I was nervous, but I mean, fake it till you make it. And so I, I shared my journey. And after there was so many teachers that came up and said, thank you so much. You know, I really struggle with doing recitals and I just kind of fake it and I don't really know what I'm doing. And it was really helpful. And then I realized that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to speak your truth. And that really helps people more than just being this, you know, show off and pretend you've got 85 letters after your name, which don't mean anything. It's about your heart. It's about your spiritual journey in serving others. And, you know, then I started working with a coach that developed my confidence and took me through all the multiple steps I've done in my journey to become the entrepreneur I am today. And I'm still learning, still growing. And, um, and it's a fun journey. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be on this adventure, especially with you today, Brie. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I mean, and, and, and another thing that, that really struck me, like, yes, you're, very confident, but like another thing that I think that you exemplify that is so important for teachers is on one side, confidence, the other side, humility and gratefulness. You're always like, thank you so much for that information. Thank you so much for having me here. And, you know, wow, I'm learning a lot from you guys. Like, you know, how do you balance that as a teacher? Like you have to be a confident, um, you know, authority, but yet you also have to, to really show humility and grace. Yeah. You know, one of the things, and I'll share, there's a very powerful book, um, um, Gratitude. 
And I've read the book multiple times. I live my life with gratitude because the universe knows that when you're grateful and you appreciate things and when you serve others, you know, we have some um, issues in our family. Like my brother is not able to work and he was a brilliant, brilliant computer. He was science, like he created programs and he did all of this. And then he had a bit of a brain injury and so not able to work. And, and I'm grateful that I can help him. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's much better to give on, to be on the side of where you can give back to the community. Uh, As a company, we give to Charity Water. Um, It's a donation that we make every single month. It's part of our business model is to give back. Everyone is entitled to have a clean glass of water to drink. Mm -hmm. And so it's just part of what we do. So when you're purchasing the Ultimate Music Theory books or you're signing up for one of our online courses, know that you are contributing to the world to make it a better place. And I definitely live in gratitude. I was born on Christmas day and my mom said I was always so grateful for all of my Christmas presents, but I honestly had more fun giving presents than I did receiving. So Mm -hmm. I think it's important to, to realize how really blessed we are with the life that we have and the opportunities that are before us. And we need to take a step into that because sometimes you, you know, if you have that excuse, well, I did my best, then my question is, did you, or could you do better? And I think we need to challenge not only ourselves, but our students with that. So if they come back with the, oh, I did my best, then I say, did you, or could you do better? Mm. And that's how you grow. Mm. That's, that's a great, that's a great way to, to incur- encourage people while also pushing them a little bit, right? That's what we do as teachers. Absolutely. And it's yes. a hard balance sometimes. Yeah. And you know, I was working with my coach today, as I mentioned, I'm writing my book, The Ultimate Music Teacher's Guide, and she pushes me and she challenges me to be better as a writer and as a communicator. And I love that. And I told her, you know, one of the great things I love is coaches that really push me and keep pushing me because I do that with my coaching as well. When we've got elite educators that go, well, I don't think I can. I say, well, don't think that you can't because you you probably know the saying, Brie, because if you think you can, or you think you can't either way, you're right. So mm-hmm. <laughs> good for you. If you think you can't. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I smile because I remember one of my students sitting at the piano one day and she goes, I can't do this. And I, and I just pushed my chair away. I said, you're right. She goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're right. You say, you, you think you can't do it. Then you're right. You can't. So, or do you want to try it again and have a different attitude? And she's like, okay, I'll take a different attitude. <laughs> I said, I good it. for you. All's in your court. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> well, I know a, a lot of people listen and watch the show because they really want to find out like, what are some more streams of income that I can tap into as a musician? And you covered that a little bit, but I just want to make sure that we cover like, what are all the streams of income that you present as possibilities for the teachers that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. So there's there's a few. So number one, as a, a music entrepreneur, number one, you're obviously going to make money in your teaching. So when you're teaching theory club classes, you're going to make more money as an educator. The second stream of income that you can make is income as a musician. Are you going to be playing at weddings? Are you going to be playing at church? Are you going to be playing as an accompanist? Uh, Are you going to be playing in a band? Do you want to just play some piano background music on a Friday night at the local restaurant? So being a musician and playing out is an excellent way to be increasing your income. Another way to make an income is to to write. You know, I've written over 60 books, as I mentioned, uh, just the other last, not last year, the year before 2021, uh, we wrote, uh, we published five international bestselling books in the power of why musician series. Now, the wonderful thing about that is not only is it an income generator, but it's also an opportunity for these, um, 125 chapters. So out of all these, um, contributing artists, now they have, um, you know, like a, um, I'll call it a business card, something that they can also promote in their business. So perhaps you want to get into writing. Another thing would be to create backing tracks because backing tracks are very popular for young students and older students. Be creative with that. Um, another one would be to create an affiliate program uh, where you can generate money. So once you come into the elite educator program, you automatically become um 
a wholesaler, which means as you're selling books to your students, you are making money. So this is just another stream of income into your business so that you can be even more profitable. And you're going to, your students are going to buy books anyway, because you're teaching theory club classes. So when you say, oh, go buy the ultimate music theory books, you can just place your order for your class. And then you're charging your students as they would as if they went to the website anyway. So there's lots and lots of ways to be generating revenue. You just need to think outside the box of, you know, if you think you can, or you think you can't, Either way, you're right. And I think some teachers thought when the pandemic hit, they went, oh, I'll just stop teaching for a week or two when it's over. I'll, you know, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. You need to always be thinking about what's next. You know, even as we created the Ultimate Music Theory app, we're constantly in development. What's needed in the marketplace? You might be the idea generator or like yourself, Bree, maybe you want to start a podcast, right? So there's lots of different ways to think about How can I generate revenue into my business? And you may even consider having another teacher come into your studio and do some some teaching for you at the younger level, be a mentor, which is what I did as well. Many of my students went on to become teachers and then they came into my studio and started teaching for me. So lots of ways to make money in the business. I love it. And so many of those we have on our 39 little known income streams for musicians. Um, But I love, uh, especially also love that idea of bringing in other teachers into your studio. I mean, it's really like building your team and building a business, right? You don't have to be the only teacher in your studio. You know, I think people think, well, they're coming for me, right? They're coming to learn from me, but it's like, they are learning from you. You're just able to mentor all these other people and spread yourself much further than you could. Either you then have to like charge way more for your services because you only have limited time and then you couldn't serve as many people and especially certain people couldn't afford you or you mentor people, you spread yourself out like a spider web and you affect more people. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Love it. Well, how would you recommend if someone's thinking, okay, I really want to build my teaching business. I'd love to to find out about this theory club thing. This sounds really cool because I, you know, I went through all the classes. I know my music theory and I could I could really help students with this because I know it's so important. How do you recommend they get started? Yeah. So if you go to ultimatemusictheory.com, um, ultimatemusictheory.com is our main website. There you will see uh, we have a free um, teacher's guide. We have a free mini course for teachers that just want to explore and get started. We have multiple free resources for you to find uh, information that you're looking for as an educator, including our blogs. And at ultimatemusictheory.com, you will also see on the homepage an opportunity to uh, register for our free free event, which is musicbusinessmastery.live. Um, so musicbusinessmastery.live is our free event. And I would welcome teachers to come hang out and uh, yeah, and help you on your journey. More than happy to. Awesome. What about socials? Can they connect with you on socials? Yes, absolutely. We are Ultimate Music Theory on Facebook. And you can also find me on um, LinkedIn um, at Glory St. Germain. Um, and all of our socials are Ultimate Music Theory. So we're pretty easy to connect with. Yeah. And I know you mentioned you had a YouTube channel as well. Yes, yes, we do. Thanks for bringing that up, Bree. We do a lot of the interviews that I've done with industry leaders are around the world. Pretty cool. Got to talk to a lot of very cool people. And uh, so we've got interviews and I also have uh, YouTube videos on teaching music theory. So um, enjoy those. Don't forget to hit like and love and subscribe. <laughs> yes, always helpful for sure. Yes. For sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been really great. I was looking forward to this interview because I know you personally before we get on here, which always makes it more more fun to to get all the the juicy details that I didn't know about you. So uh, great to have this conversation with you. And thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with everyone here. Yes. Thank you so much, Bri. I look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. 
Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.